All right, folks, so today we're going to be cleaning up the custom modified uh, Cheddar Bay 2 bait, or you could call this a bladed 2 bait. Um, previously, you know, I showed Randy's method from Intuitive Angling on YouTube, where he basically, you know, cut a piece of zoom worm. I use power bait, um, put it up the hollow shaft of the tube, and then afterwards, you basically hook it from the tip of the head in through the worm. That way you keep, you know, that hook and that tube on there as a hook keeper and it, you know, stays on after you catch, you know, bass after bass. And it's a pretty simplified way, but what I don't like about it is the head sticking out. Um, and it, sometimes it can be hard to match whatever uh, chatterbait head you're using. Um, I like this method better. This is a lot cleaner looking. Um, what you just need is basically X-Acto knife. Um, and some mana glue and you just basically sit up slit open the top of the head run, run that uh, jig head through it um, and the hook and then seal it back up and There you go. This is the final product. You know, I basically Use the vise to hold, you know, the two bait together um, To seal it up as I put the glue on it, but I figured out a different meta method just using these twisties You know these garbage can twisties to just twist them to squeeze um, the two parts of the tube together just to make sure you know that basically that soft plastic heals but this is you know the vice was it wasn't too bad a method but as you can see I kind of scuffed up both the sides of the tubes um, this is just a cleaner way um, you can buy these sturdy twists over at Lowe's um, in the outside part of the garden section um, this just I mean, I, I know it's going to kill because, you know, Randy just made that video saying this is one of the secret lures that him and his friends have been using. Um, this is just something a lot of bass fishermen have been tried on the Lake St. Clair smallmouth. Um, you know, the bass haven't seen it quite a bit. Um, and the fish, or I mean, the fishermen haven't used it, you know. Lake St. Clair has turned into kind of a pressured lake. So using something different. I think can like bring in a lot more fish. I talked about this in a previous video. And uh, using the combination of how effective and how deadly a standard chatterbait is over at Kent Lake for largemouth, and then combining the, you know, how well two baits work on smallmouth, and then combining the two, I mean, I think you got a fish catching machine right here. And what's unique about what you can do is, dude, you can you could try all types of different uh cheddar baits out you know uh the problem you're kind of come in hand is some way that some of these cheddar baits are made um this is a booyah half ounce jig and you know it's going to be since since the the blades made inside the jig that's not going to work really well um you know this is a rage blade you see where the jig head is it's actually on the blade here so that probably won't work really well either and then you got the Project Z where the jig head tends to be a lot bigger. Um, what works really well, I found out, is just original um, chatter bait. And what really, really works for well is a Strike King Thunder Cricket. You know, air casting, um, my good friend actually gave me one of these. And this is what's actually inside um, this extreme bass deckle tube in the uh, Emerald Shiner color. So. I mean, doesn't the, the the painted blade blends in really nicely the, with the trilaminate colors and especially the green up top here just blends in nicely, doesn't it? It's just so clean looking. This is gonna crush it, man. You know, I went to every store recently, every brick and mortar store, just about fishing wise, looked for a um, jackhammer uh, Z-Man because that's definitely what I want to try and hook one up with. I couldn't find it, so. I ended up going to Bass Pro, got a few of these Thunder Crickets, and then I got even a more unique lure called this Fish Head Primal Vibe Catch the Beast, which actually has a willow blade down here. And maybe I can figure out how to like make a slit on the bottom of the tube and put this through the tube bait and mend it back up again. That would be very cool. But I, I might just try this out as is. This probably works pretty well. So, um, and I bought a bunch of, I bought, a uh, quarter ounce uh, original Z-Mans. I bought a couple three eighth ounce. Um, and that's basically the sizes I use on Lake St. Clair when I'm just jigging my tube. So um, you might want to go even heavier since, you know, chatterbaits are known to keep 
fishing lures in the upper part of a water column. But since I'll be kind of just like, you know, kind of working it like a bladed jig up and down like I do that Sweet Six Shad spin blade, um, I'm just probably going to let it sink to the bottom and just slowly rip it. Or not rip it, just jig it slowly up and down just like a bladed jig um, and or bladed bait, I mean. And I think it's going to become quite deadly. Um, you guys know I love modifying my lures again. You know, I've tried other lures fishermen have never tried, such as the bladed swim bait, the Sweet Six Shad Spin Blade. Shout out to Sweet Six. Um, you know, it's it's just fun trying out new things. I think you can discover new things. You really can. And I honestly think modifying your lures can make you think outside the box and turn you into kind of a better fisherman. You know, you start to study the fish, see what they respond to, the sound. The different colors, the vibration, all types of different things trying to match the hatch, such as, you know, this new natural forage technology that Captain Wayne Carpenter uses in his uh, extreme bass toggle tube. So, and I, of course, went to the mobile gas station. You know, originally in the uh, next video, I actually ta uh, called it um, a BP. It's no longer BP. So, just to let you guys know, and I bought up a bunch more tubes, like $70 worth. Um, I bought these Great Lakes Perch. I love this color. In fact, I think this is my favorite. Then it probably would be that Emerald Shiner. Um, then some Great Lakes Craws. Mayfly for fish fly season, you know, when the smallmouth kind of shut down. And then I also bought these mini drop shot tubes, which I can't wait to try. And they do, remember... They do have some uh, tinier, they got some smaller chatterbaits, so this, you could use this in ponds too if you want to use these small drop shot tubes and put a little chatterbait in there, just something to think about. Or maybe even for trout or whatever, you know, some other species. But for right now, um, we're going to take this Thunder Cricket out, and I'm trying to think what color I should do it with. Um, you know, I already did one in the Emerald Shiner. Um... You know, air casting. These are 13 bucks a pop. Um, they're not as, I mean, they're not as cheap as I thought they were. They're expensive. I think this is something, I think air casting said compar comparable to a jackhammer, but a little lesser of the value because uh, uh, the jackhammer is like 20 bucks, I want to say. But these are not cheap, man. I think it's got a pretty big. So they put like a little, it put like a little hook down there to make it. And look at it, I already cut myself. Uh, typical hook down there um, to make sure that doesn't, that skirt doesn't come off. So, bitch to, bitch to take it off. Um, but anyways, um, we got that ready. You see how small the jig head is, even though this is a 3 8 ounce. Uh, fits nicely in a two bait. Um, thinking what color? How about yeah? Let's do a gray lake perch since this is my, I'd say it's my favorite color. Um, I actually bought a big package this time because um, I know this is quite the effective uh, color on my Saint Clair. Uh, works very well. Um, all right, so we're gonna use uh, my favorite color of the extreme bass tackle tubes, which is the Great Lakes Perch. Um, some might think when you're making the slit to uh, put in uh, the jig head of the chatterbait, um, you're gonna want to do it near the tip or maybe even the bottom. No, don't do that. Kind of do it near the top of the tube and then make like a small quarter inch slice all the way down. Um, and even if Basically, um, it's not big enough. This this material will stretch. So, um, and you're kind of making the slit right where the eye is on the jig head of the chatterbait. So, um, I'll make it a little longer. And this stuff's flexible, so you don't gotta make the slit super long. And what's nice about Captain Wayne Carpenter's tubes and material he uses. It's pretty stronger. I would say it's a stronger material, material than other two baits. Um, and it's even thicker. So uh, when you mend this back together with the Menda glue, it's going to last, believe me. And even though, you know, you worry about having to do this over the, uh, 
every time you know the bass beat up the tube you don't really have to because you can keep using the mend of glue to keep sealing it up again um eventually you probably have to replace it because bass like uh beating up those uh little tentacles and stuff chewing them off um so so basically just tuck it in there um and then we're gonna wrap that around and just you're gonna seal it up and then we'll first put glue, glue in there then uh seal it up and then put another uh, we'll actually do two or three layers of uh medic glue but what what we use as zip ties for basically um is keeping uh the two sides of the tube together as it dries and it mends together that uh that glue material because um i noticed with this mended glue even though it works really well um seals it back up again um the more glue you put on uh this wound this slice it's going to keep splitting and splitting that's the problem with the glue is it just like use it for any material um it you know you make a slice or there's a slice anywhere beat up anywhere it, it just like it it actually um uh basically melts the plastic a little bit so um so that tie is going to prevent that as it's uh drying up and you know healing the soft plastic material so oh oh see we're dripping it all over the place so and that's okay so make sure you get it in there you can even do it a little bit in the internal but definitely on the sides of the slit you made um and then of course just take that flexible wire and then turn it twist it like this and it's gonna keep that together as it glues together and then after um after you basically you know give it like i would say 20 minutes to fully dry or so you can put a bunch of uh you know layers of more soft plastic on top of there and this is just a cleaner way to do it because you know before i use the vise and it just it just beat up the sides of the tube bait as you see here i'll probably end up redoing this but this is like the cleanest way i've found out and in fact you just have to i mean you could use two zip ties but it seems like one works really well and actually you could start doing a few layers uh near the bottom of that slit you made but i'm telling you folks i think this is gonna catch on and you can definitely give a shout out to randy because he's definitely given me the idea of doing this um but i put my own pizzazz my own spin on it you know and honestly i like doing um you know i, I kind of like doing that it's just like i see other people's way they modify lures and then I like making my own and see if I can improve it. And I think I did because this is just a cleaner way of doing it. Um, so let's see where this one's at. I assume it should be pretty dry by now. Undo it. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's mended pretty well. You could do a few layers on top. That way it seals properly. Uh, Just right across the top. I'm telling you this this Menda glue is awesome. I think we're gonna find out these Thunder Cricket tubes or we're gonna work pretty well. I just wonder if they're gonna work really well like, like somewhere like Kent Lake or something too. So um so we have a uh Emerald Shiner color and a Great Lakes Perch color. What color should we do next? Um, and I just want to let you guys know, you can always do other types of brands of tubes. Do a Savage Gear tube. This one actually has a tube shaped like a goby. The dorsal fin up above, the two tails to the side. Um, hmm. And I'm a big fan of Chompers tubes that are you know, really laced with uh, garlic scent and salt. Um, these work really well. Um, but let's do, I think I want to do one more tube bait. 
And just to let you guys know too, I I bought some other Thunder Crickets in like a uh, chrome color blade. Um, two of those, and then another one that's using a blue painted blade. Um, you can do all types of different color combinations. Uh, you know, I'm sure they got gold plated blades you could do. Um, but that's what Bass Pro had at the time. Uh, and I do have to say, I tried out like some of the Z-Man's, just original. The jig had just a little too big for the extreme tackle to extreme bass tackle tubes, which, you know, it's a four inch tube, but it just... It's just hard to cover that bigger head. These Thunder Cricket heads, the jig heads, um, it just, they tuck in nicely uh, with the extreme bass tackle tubes. And I assume it'll work really well with other tubes as well. They're jig heads, even though, again, I was using a Z Man 3 8 ounce, and these are 3 8 ounce as well. These just, their jig heads are a lot smaller. So let's, let's do a chrome plated blade. What the hell? Um, Take this one on the packaging. And I'd like to see, I mean, you know, for the most part, the Z-Man is pretty small when you look at it from the side, but when you look at it from this angle, they're real wide, uh, the head. So I think, uh, yeah, these... Um, these Thunder Crickets just tuck in a lot nicer. Um, let's see. What color should we do? I'm trying to think here. Um, oh, yeah. How about these purple? This like, uh, it's like a light purple on the bottom and a dark, like a dark black purplish up above. Let's do one of these. Wouldn't that be cool? I'm down. I'm down like a clown. Just wonder if I should do the do this up or down. Hmm. Usually it has the lighter colors down. So I'm gonna do it facing down, so. Again, when you're starting to cut, um, do it near the top, don't near, do it near the tip. Um, what's nice about these Strike Kings, the eye does uh, adjust a little bit, so that's kinda nice. And I do want to say, since uh, the eye is kind of adjustable on um, on the thunder thunder cricket, try to pull it up near the tip of its head, up up top here. That way, it's easy to slide in and have that eyelet popping out up top here, where it should be on the tube. So um, that's another reason I like the uh, the thunder cricket. It just everything works proportionally well using the Thunder Cricket compared to the Z-Man. Um, I still want to try some other brand of tubes. Maybe like the um, Jackhammer since I've heard it works so well. But for now, Thunder Cricket works really the best out of a bunch I've tried. Um, so right there, I'll try slitting it down the middle. Maybe work her way a little further up near the top here. See where we're at. Yeah, I think that's perfect. So it's kind of pretty easy to just slide it through the tube. I think just this is an easier way of doing it rather than doing it the way Randy and his buddies are doing it, which I'm sure it works well, but this is you're getting the actual true profile of what a tube jig should look like rather than the jig head you know popping out <clears throat> um, I think you know for the most part I think bass go for the tube because it looks like a crayfish might lose that uh, that um, look if you do it that way so anyways yeah that worked pretty well Alrighty, so what we got to do now is Made that slit a little too big, but that's okay. We can still mend it up with the glue Just make sure you put enough in there 
I'm definitely gonna order some more up. I think they got a good price on this stuff on eBay. So. I just can't believe more fishermen don't, don't like using this stuff. It's pretty magical, like I said. Not only using it for modifying baits, or I mean, sorry, not only using it for uh, repairing baits, but modifying them as well. So, many different uses. Gotta think outside the box, doing, or they're doing every thing everyone else does. Just want to make sure that uh, it just lines up proportionately when I'm sealing this back up. Like I said, even though it's not perfect sometimes, you can still go back in there and put a few layers um, on top of it. But I think we got this one pretty set. So how about we do another uh, Fire Tiger? I just really like this color. Um, so straight at the tip. mean at the head or the top I'm sorry you know I've been making I think the holes a little too big you really don't want to make them that big to be honest with you Run some glue in there. I honestly think you should keep it pinched together because once you get this stuff in there, sometimes it starts splitting or any. Because again, it this glue is kind of like it starts melting it. So you want to keep it pressed together even when you're putting the glue in there. That way, it doesn't split the tube any more than what it is. Got to be careful. It's a learning process for doing something, and no one does. So simple as that. So I. Remended it together. You can again put a few more layers or a few more drops in where that slit is at. That way, it, 
And then once it dries, we'll put on a few more layers, is what I do. Put a drop right near that eye is at. And simple as that, man. We made up basically two, I'm sorry, we made up four chatterbait tubes. I think they're gonna work really, really well. Something the fish haven't seen. Something uh, that the fishermen haven't used. 